Okay. But, uh, you know, I absolutely take your point that given the vaccine coverage and all of that, it may brunt the impact. But tell us a little bit about how the Delta variant seems to be upending some of these calculations. Because if you look at what's happening around the world, uh, in America now it's 93% of all cases, even though their vaccination spread and coverage is much more than ours. China, apparently, Delta has reached nearly half the country. Sydney in Australia seeing record cases, Delta cases a day. Again, with, with better percentages of vaccination. Yeah, so this is the problem with the variants. And of course, we cannot predict what the next variant is going to look like. And this mm. is why we need to make sure we keep transmission as low as possible. So we prevent variants from forming. So on the one hand, we want to reduce the risk to people of getting sick and hospitals overwhelmed. But the other reason to keep, trans keep transmission low is to prevent other variants even more dangerous than Delta. Right. Delta is clearly more, much, much more transmissible. We know that one person can spread the infection to seven, eight, or even 10 people, as opposed to the original Wuhan strain, which was, you know, one person to two people. Um, and so it, it makes, that's why we get these explosive outbreaks. It, it gets uh, also, therefore, more people get sick and end up in the hospital. We've also seen data from many vaccines now that show reduction in utilizing activity against the Delta variant. Now, luckily for us, all of the data uh, across all the vaccines that we've, we have data on so far mm. shows that they still prevent severe disease and, and hospitalization up to 90% of the time. But they're not preventing infection. So the hope was that the vaccines will prevent both severe disease and infection. With a Delta variant, the protection against infection is much less, maybe in the range of 40, 50, or 60%. Now, this immunity against severe disease seems to be lasting quite long, but though the neutralizing antibodies do start waning off after a period of time. Hmm. So I think the big question now for all of us is, how long will this immunity protect us? Hmm. When will boosters, if at all boosters are needed, in which groups will they be needed? They may right. be selected groups like the elderly, the immunosuppressed, etc. And what else do we need to do to keep the transmission low in addition to increasing vaccine coverage, okay. which is, you know, the public health and social measures. So for some time to come, we have to avoid mass gatherings, for example. You know, we will need to open workplaces, educational institutions, mm. but there has to be a COVID protocol to do that. So these are the things we need to start putting in, in place, um, even as we try to speed up uh, vaccination coverage as soon as quickly as possible. Right. You said some many, uh, many, many important things, uh, one of which is the fact that even though there are now multiple instances where people who've got vaccinated once, even twice, reporting getting reinfected, uh, especially in places like America, it's still important to get vaccinated because like you said, there's still 90% protection against critical illness or the critical impacts of the disease. Uh, it may not prevent you from getting infected, but it'll most likely prevent you from getting critically infected. So that's very important. 